now. Again, I am Chris Osborne with First Indiana Robotics. Trying to get used to saying that. Uh, as you guys know, we were Indiana first uh, as we were first formed. Uh, but um, on kickoff this year, we announced the rebrand to be more aligned with our headquarters. Uh, the um, ask several years ago uh, from first was that all the uh, statewide or regional organizations um, uh, brand themselves as first New England or first in Texas. Uh, so we had taken some time to look at uh, what that would mean for us. And so we had looked at first in Indiana and some other things. And there were some already some companies, um, financial companies, banks, etc. Mm -hmm. So we went with first Indiana Robotics. Uh, and so you'll be seeing a lot of that You're kind of taking the year to really get the brand out there. Uh, so um, the good news is being a rookie team, you won't have a bad habit to break. Um, you'll just know us as First Indiana Robotics. Uh, go from there. We had kickoff on Saturday. Uh, that was exciting. And are, are we in week three? No, two. This is two. This yeah, is two. two. I clearly have an hour ready, not slept much. Um, and so very exciting game this year. Uh, I would, um, again, remind everybody, and this is kind of that, you know, important announcement section of the, of the conversation. Um, I told everybody to download the rules so you'd have a copy of them because on Saturday it gets tough. But now make sure when you guys are looking at the rules, you're looking at them from the first website. You're not still looking at that hard copy. That, that hard copy is no good anymore, right? So for the most part it is. It's not like they change everything, but, but there's the team updates. Make sure you've got students staying on top of those team updates. Uh, they come out twice a week. Tuesdays and Fridays. Tuesdays and Fridays. Uh, one thing, um, one of our suppliers uh, is here in Indiana, as you know, uh, Andy Mark. Um, something that they do on YouTube on Fridays, they're doing lunch. Lunch with Andy. Yes. Lunch with Andy. Usually a time or two every week. Okay, so, so. yeah, so if you, if you go to YouTube and do lunch with Andy, uh, those are usually pretty good. They're usually about 10 minutes, yeah. something like that, 10, 15 minutes, and they're mm -hmm. good. They're some good topics, and it's not it's it's not just about selling Andy Mark stuff. Um, he talks about well there's a lot of good things so yeah. check out lunch with andy they're fun um the, i think the kids will enjoy them too um and so the yeah the big thing is staying on top of the rule changes uh this week i've got the team update email already said it's going to be going out on thursday afternoon and there are some links to all that so there's links right. to like the kickoff videos and stuff so hopefully uh rookie teams out there um hopefully you are prototyping uh, and really, uh, you've, hopefully you've spent some time breaking down the game. And, uh, and so now what you're going to see veteran teams doing, uh, they're going to be kind of in the, there's kind of the low quality prototyping with cardboard and wood, right? And they're kind of next level prototyping. And I think that's kind of where our teams are probably at about yeah. now. They're, they'll be doing some design review types of activities uh, where they'll have the students, you know, really try to explain their concepts uh, and then um, and you know Braden that might be something that you guys could reach out to trying even uh, mm -hmm. and see if there's some additional faculty that might be willing to come over and spend an hour two hours just mm -hmm. looking at yep. designs or maybe here's a great idea is reach out to Vestal okay up in Angola and okay. say hey because we've met with them once but reach out to a company like that because some of the teams do that they'll reach out to a local sponsor that have engineers that work there yeah and say hey could we come show you this and just have you guys pick it apart we right? reach out with uh to bosch bosch oh, is helping yeah. sponsor us so we've got right. some engineers yeah. they're fine we've got some engineers from bosch coming in um actually tomorrow after school um Good. to work with our guys cool. so i forgot you guys were a bosch team i completely forgot that's awesome no, you're fine yeah. you're fine yeah yeah well that's the that's so. the right kind of connection so so anyway so yep. tonight's topic is um about social media and uh, I was really glad to be able to have Brad come on. Uh, Brad and Team 461, Westside Boiler Invasion, uh, here in West Lafayette, uh, they do a really fantastic job with the website, with social media. We have a lot of teams that do a great job um, and I try to just get different teams and different folks come in and talk on different topics. Uh, but, um, but so the topic tonight with social media isn't really about like how to control it and how to, you know, what, you know, we'll talk a little bit about the, the what watch out for kind of things. But we really just kind of wanted to go over 
which platforms and why and how how teams are using them uh, in first yeah. and uh, and then some of the catches and caveats. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna let him talk now. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Thank you, Brad. <laughs> so, uh, like I said, my name is Brad Thompson. I'm basically the lead everything but the robot mentor for 461. I have a significant population of mechanical engineers who, who take care of that stuff. So I kind of take care of programming, business, media, marketing, outreach kind of stuff. Um, so I'll kind of walk you through how our social media stuff works. Um, we've got a handful of kids that really, that is kind of their job. They focus on doing graphic design stuff and keeping track of our social media properties. So we've got Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, and then we have a website that we run where we push information to. Um, so kind of talk about what we're posting to different things a little bit to start with, I think. So. Um, Facebook, we use that a lot to engage with like parents, grandparents. It's not really something we use a whole lot to engage with the kids with because, you know, Facebook's for old people now. Um, but posting information for parents, grandparents, families to keep up with what's going on. Um, usually try and post at least this time of year since it's build season and we're busy and there's lots going on. Um, usually try and post at least three, four times a week. Um, kind of depends on when those kids are here, just exactly when stuff gets posted. But yeah, and it's usually not anything fancy. Here's a couple of pictures of people working on things. Here's a little bit of a write up of what's happening. Um, again, kind of let parents and in our case, um, this is year 21 for our team. So we've got a lot of alumni out there that follow us and most of them follow us on Facebook and keep up with what we're doing on there. Um, then our Twitter page, a little bit less active these days. Um, but again, just kind of post a couple pictures every now and then. Um, we usually do Twitter more at events where it's like, hey, we were just in a match and we won. Or, hey, we were just in a match and maybe it didn't go so hot. Yeah. Um, that kind of stuff. A little bit more like, timely, this is what's happening right now sort of stuff. Um, audience for that is a little bit more mixed because we've got a little bit more targeted at the kids and their friends and that kind of stuff. Um, a little bit less directed at the parents and mm -hmm. the, the older set. So. And then do Chris you guys, do you guys, have, I'm yes. playing around, do you guys have a, um, cause I think Braden, do you guys have a LinkedIn page? Did I see that? Um, yeah, it was suggested yeah. by Bosch that we possibly do a LinkedIn yeah. page more for our um, fundraising for next year and connecting with local mm -hmm. businesses. Yeah. Um, so not really for our parents and students, but more for our business partners yeah. um, to do a LinkedIn. That's what was suggested. So we, we're trying to kind of get a couple things started and then we'll slowly keep adding on. Um, okay. So I liked that. I, I don't yeah, know many I teams that do have it. I, have, that was a I good wouldn't idea. think of doing LinkedIn for that. I, Cause I know we don't have a LinkedIn set up anywhere. I don't think. Um, but I know pretty Maybe. first programs, okay. um, another organization I'm somewhat involved with up here. I know they have one for their members and their alumni to sort of okay. network with each other, but I haven't really thought of using that for uh Sponsor engagement. That's a good idea. We should it do is that. A, it is a really <laughs> good idea. Yeah, I saw that and because um, you guys had uh, asked to connect with me. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, and then that prompted me to even think I should be telling other teams about this. Yeah. Uh, from a professional standpoint, that's uh, that's a really good idea. Right. Um, so with the um, the website, mm -hmm. you guys. Um, so it's third party hosted. Yep. And uh, so for the folks out there, maybe who've not done websites before, getting a domain, um, you know, from start to finish in terms mm -hmm. of owning a domain, average cost. So getting the domain name itself registered will be eh, eight, 10, 12 bucks a year, probably. Mm -hmm. um, usually the longer and more specific your name gets, the cheaper it is. 
boilerinvasion.org. <laughs> um, so, and then, yeah, from there, depending on how you're building your website, there may be other hosting costs involved. There's plenty of free ways to get a website out there. Um, Wix, Weebly, Squarespace, I think they still have a free option. Um, plenty of different ways to go out and build a free website. Um, I'm a web developer by trade and I have lots of bored programmers usually, so I don't let my kids do that. I make them build their website from scratch. Mm -hmm. But um, especially if you don't have those kids and those mentor resources available, mm -hmm. go you know, get something out there. It doesn't have to be all technically fancy. Um, Website is used for more like archival content, so information about our team history, more like permanent sorts of information. Um, we've got resources out there from like some of our outreach programs, so we can share those with other teams, um, safety resources, more just general information about, about our team and about how we work, and more, again, more like permanent information for people to go and find. Um, so that way we can use our social media to say, oh, hey, we just had this outreach event. Here's pictures from this event. If you want to learn more or learn how to run one of these yourself, here's a link to our website where you can go find out more. You yeah, guys that's, I think uh, that's, I highly recommend for any team, it doesn't matter if you're a rookie or a veteran, uh, definitely spend time, you know, you go on Google and you just start putting in FRC, Yep. you know, teams or FRC, whatever. And then the other good website to start from would be, it's called the Blue Alliance. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, the Blue Alliance is a privately run group that it's it's a scouting app, but it's a really great way for you to see all the team numbers. So you mm -hmm. could, cause you could sort by state or whatever. Yep. And then you could start looking at websites that are being run by other teams. And, and usually they'll have a contact us. Yep. And if you see a site you really like, contact them and say, so how are you hosting that site? Where is that? You know, whatever. And they'll yep. share all that information with you. Yep. Um, so there's a lot of good ones. Um, and so you guys, like you said, we're looking at, at yours right now. Uh, yeah. I like what you're saying there where it's archival. Here's another way for you to interact with your sponsors yep. and a way to thank sponsors by getting them, you know, visible. Yep. Uh, also a good way, a, a good idea is to also occasionally utilize your social media yeah, for that Yeah, we well. just did a big push um, over the summer where we tagged a bunch of our bigger sponsors in social media posts and some of the kids drew up cute little graphics of the team mascot interacting with whatever the sponsor does in some way. We yeah. did those out throughout the summer, so that was well, then, cool. And then right there on your website yeah. is the donor information. Donor information. So it's a good place yeah. to send your donors to find out more about you, figure out how to get involved with what you're doing, send you money, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I don't, um, so you guys, so most schools probably can set Correct. up smiled on Amazon uh -huh. counts. Yep. So, yep. Um, so our team has our own nonprofit organization separate from the school. So it's a little bit easier for us to set up stuff like that. Um, so okay. that, that's one of those things. Go talk to your school about and see, what other options they might have for you for fundraising opportunities. Yeah. And definitely from talking about social media and website tonight, um, Brad and I definitely wanted to talk a little bit about the, cause there's, there's school-based teams and then there's community group based right. teams. And even though the kids that are on this team here, they, for the most part come from one high school, the team itself is actually not based in the school and is run by its own separate nonprofit. Correct. So if you're a school-based team, one of the things you definitely want to make sure you do, though, is before you jump into the realm of social media, mm -hmm. is definitely clear it through yeah. the appropriate channels. Yeah, so go talk to your whichever principal that you deal with. Um, just say, hey, do we have a policy about you know, what the kids can post on social media? Do we have a policy about sharing that account with the school or giving them permission to see or have access to the account? Do we need to? Like Chris was telling me earlier, um, they went through this with their school this summer, and they actually, the school actually had a little disclaimer policy they wanted posted yeah. everywhere that they can saying, the team, it does not represent the school. Uh, <laughs> this is not an official school communication. So, yeah, probably so they, a good idea to touch base before you really dive into things rather than getting into it afterwards. 
Yeah, that, so your school might want you to do something like this where you publish a disclaimer saying it's not officially coming from you. They, the school may also want um, the, uh, they may want the login information uh, because they may want, you know, if, if, if you or Sean were to leave or, or any of the other folks who are gonna watch this later, if you lead teacher sponsor right. quits or is fired or something like that, mm -hmm. they, they wanna shut that down and, and take control of it quickly. And, and they should, I mean, right. it's, you know, cause even though we put the disclaimers out there, people are gonna um, associate anything that with this team, with the school. Right. Now, as we were also talking earlier though, I've been helping run the the social media with this team uh, for a long time, and we've never really had any situation where we had to shut down a post or right. you know things like that. Um, I think the big thing is just you know you give rights away to kids to do these things, and it's important to make sure you take those away when they graduate. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if they've got logins, you know, every year I change the login to the Twitter account when we've got a new group of kids come in or, right. you know, just things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But so then on your website, then um, is the back end a WordPress? Nope. No. Okay. It's all written from scratch. What, written from scratch. Yes. So there are, um, I mentioned WordPress. There's a couple of ways to do websites. You, you could do from scratch like they're doing, mm -hmm. or you could do what's called a content managed site. Yep. Um, there's several out. Well, there's a million. A million. There's a million, yeah. and it really is going to come Word, down to it. WordPress is probably your best bet. It's simple, it's easy, and it's relatively quick to get up and running with. So. Yeah, and the the templates they have are usually really clean yep. Yep. and perfect, and pretty easy to throw a, a header image on there and a logo. Yep. What they call hero images, or yep. um, and and pretty quickly have a, a yeah. professional, clean looking mm -hmm. site. And, and it's one of those out. things that. Yeah, it's pretty easy to grow with too, because like they have the free plan to get you started. And then if you decide you want a little bit more out of it, you can pay a little bit and get a little bit more. So it's easy to grow with as you need more out of your website. Yeah. Um, okay, so <laughs> Cynthia uh, said, not sure if you can hear me. We can't. So, uh, but FRC judges now are looking for facts about community events and team events. This website is a good place for judges to look at. Yes, yep. it is. Now, keep in mind, though, Cynthia, that um, just because it's on the web doesn't mean it's true. Um, but if you if you put pictures, it out there publicly, pictures, pictures are, are yeah, pictures yep. are helpful. Um, and there's more coming down the pike on that with with first, I think, in terms of verification of of mm -hmm. things. And we're specifically really talking more about um, like the chairman's award, right? Uh, and so, and the um, engineering inspiration and some of those things where teams are saying, yeah. well, we've mentored uh, you know twenty two first Lego league teams, or they're they're going to want to even see more documentation now um, where you actually get right. people from those teams writing letters saying, uh, thank you for mentoring us. Yes, you know. Team 461, mm -hmm. um, uh, yes, yep. that's right. And she New said chairman's, chairman's information is form. offering yep. a form. Yeah, yep. Uh, My kids exactly. have been working on that for a couple weeks now, yeah. trying to track down all the documentation for all of their events we've been working on. And that's a good thing. I it think, is. I think if, you're, um, if you work at a university and you're writing a research paper oh, or yeah. you're writing a book or something, you, mm -hmm. you've got to document and, and prove, show your sources. Yep. And uh, we live in a information age where people can say and do whatever they want online. And this is a, um, uh, but I think it helps. Oh, yeah. And so I think it's good. And it's good for that, for the kids to have to back that up. Yep. Um, any question, uh, Braden, do you have any questions about, for Brad, uh, about like the social media stuff? Or Cynthia, I think we can hear you. Uh, now. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. <laughs> oh yay. yeah. Well, I'm at, I'm in our team meeting and they're um, being loud, supposedly working. So um, what I was going to say in an ideal world, you guys were talking about peer um, papers with citations, yeah. and I'd love to have something where all the teams put their facts online and they're they're we're able to peer review each other. Um, yeah, that well, yeah, and yeah. and some teams are really transparent and do put a lot of stuff online. Mm -hmm. uh, some teams. Um, 
aren't transparent doesn't mean it, it doesn't mean they're not doing it. It doesn't mean that they're fudging anything. Right. It's just that um, they're a little more uh, close to the vest on some of the stuff they do. Yeah. You'll see some teams um, are extremely transparent during their build season. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a couple teams out there that will take pictures and video from day one of their prototypes and everything. And then there are other teams that you won't even know that they're even operating. Right. And then all of a sudden at the end of the season, you know, the end of the build season, because uh, they don't want people to see what they're working on or doing. So, but from a, from a, an award standpoint, I definitely agree. Oh, yeah. I think that, that the more we can mm -hmm. uh, verify. Yeah. So any, um, so, yeah. So I kind of hit on the, the main kind of platforms. Um, we really ha I don't know too many teams that dabble in Snapchat. I think a lot of students yeah. do. Yeah. We do um, run a Snapchat filter, filter at our events. Yep. And there's an email, this week's email, I've had it out for the last few weeks. It's kind of a fun, uh, students can design the filter contest. Yep. Um, and then that will be the filter we'll purchase and use at the different events. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, th that's been well received. They like that. But I don't. We don't really, I don't know of any teams yeah. that, but Instagram is definitely a big one too, by the way, because yep. for Instagram, that's how the kids on the team are going to communicate with their peers. Yep. So that's a bigger push come recruiting season and. Yeah. They are not going to see their friends on Facebook. No. <laughs> no. But, but that's it. I cannot stress enough though for grandparents, aunts, uncles, uh, potential sponsors, people like that. Yep. They are. You, on. you still need that Facebook page. Yeah. yeah. Um, and of course, every year the the funny conversation is when, if you're going to have kids help you with it and you tell them, Oh, by the way, you have to have a Facebook account in order to help manage the Facebook account. Mm -hmm. uh, they kind of, oh. <laughs> uh, which is so funny how times change, but um, well, uh, so th the big thing is really just kind of, I would say do research. Uh, as you're getting ready to launch it, yeah. go on. If you have your own Twitter or Facebook accounts, start looking at what other teams are yep. doing, uh, how they're using them. Um, the Facebook thing, another good one is to, uh, when you get to a competition, if they provide a link for the live stream, get that out onto your Facebook page. That helps us too, and it helps right. you know, the event. Uh, and then you'll get your schedule. A lot of teams will take a picture of their schedule, and they'll post that on, and then, yep. and then people at home can get on and, and – Sometimes we don't run on time, but um, but they can at least have a general idea of oh hey I think I think they're up again. Um, so grandparents, if they're you know they're in Wisconsin and they want to you know turn on the live stream and, and watch uh, Susie or Johnny drive the robot, um, it's a it's a great it is a great tool. So yep. um, and we do, we have got, we got some teams out there doing uh, quite a bit with YouTube as well. Yeah, because that's a whole another thing to talk about is making videos to document your process and doing robot reveal videos at the end of build season. Or... Yeah. Go look at robot reveals yeah. like Google or YouTube search robot reveals. There's some teams out there year to year that have really stellar reveal videos. They're fun. Uh, and there's a, sh a, a Twitch show. Yep. What's top 25. Yeah. Is that that'll come show? out. Uh, yeah. Come competition season where so, there's a bunch of first mentors that get together and do pretty much an ESPN style review of all the competitions and look at some of the top robots that have been out there that week. So. And they usually do a, a reveal video review, I think. Or yeah, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. So, yeah, so there's a lot of different tools. Mm -hmm. and, and some of your students, if they're interested in that, they could do their own YouTube shows. Yep. We have some teams that do kind of weekly news show mm -hmm. updates and uh, or short videos. Or It's a great way to um, also uh, shoot videos that you could then show your school. Yeah. Um, school board at the end of the year, mm -hmm. uh, share out with uh, parents and, and sponsors. Yep. Uh, so video. what's that? Chairman's video. Yeah. So yep, that's um, important too. Yeah. You'll, you'll do your chairman's video. Um, bring it on a thumb drive when you're, when you're submitting for chairman's mm -hmm. um, some teams will not put it on YouTube though until after, after the season's over. Yep. Right. Um, and then uh, if, because really the the only thing it's really it can be used in the judges room, but primarily it's used just for showing uh, they show the chairman's video of the team that earned the chairman's award at that event, um, and then if you earn the chairman's award at, at the world championship in your hall of fame team, then that will also then get posted on the first website. Yeah. Um, the all the essays though 
uh, of the winners from district events, regional events, um, and district championships, all those essays are posted on the FIRST website. So you can go back and look the last several years and you can read chairman's essays yep. uh, from even like the district championship winners uh, yeah. to start to look at how do we do this thing. So right. that's a, well, that's yeah. a And that's chairman's. another thing that a lot of teams will publish on their website too. Because I think we've got a bunch of our chairman's essays and Woody yep. Flowers essays going back 10 years now. Yep, and, uh, and um, business plans. Mm -hmm. Uh, that and then um, it's another interesting way to do research. Uh, the BlueAlliance.com website's another good way to do research. Like as you're yep. looking at this year's game, mm -hmm. you can just pull up a team and, and look at last year or two years before three. Or find a game that because there's only so many different types of games, <laughs> you know. And so you know we've had ball shooters before. They've been bigger. Or they've been smaller. But um, but the mechanisms can be relatively the same. So that's a good tool for research. Um, I guess the last one I'd mention um, is uh, Chief Delphi is a message board. Mm -hmm. um, it's it, it can be a good source <laughs> of information. Um, I just say like anything else, um, just like Twitter or Facebook or whatever, you can also, um, kids, can, kids or mentors can get into some, we'll just say interesting conversations <laughs> on Chief Delphi. But, but, but I have gone on there occasionally and asked uh, a question just for some help and just I'm always blown away within a few minutes you know boom uh, right. some really good answers and really good links mm -hmm. um, but yeah so yeah. That, that's it I think that's it Brad anything else you can think of I think I'm done any questions anything else mm -mm. I can think of I don't think so cool. well uh, Cynthia I'm glad you guys are joining us um, and we look forward next year uh, having you guys on board officially it'll be exciting um and uh Braden, i hope you guys are uh doing okay week two um so far so good <laughs> good good and it sounds like you've got some good it'll be neat to um make sure you guys get some good pictures of yeah, those yes. boss engineers yeah, we need to, not yeah. just to not just you know to mm -hmm. put out on social media oh, yeah. to thank them or whatever but yep. but also uh we have quite a few teams that still to this day and, and brad i don't know if you guys do this but we have a lot of teams that still do like actual scrapbooks um, with real pictures in them um, <laughs> and keep them in their pits and stuff. So just even having for a history. Yeah. So, so anyway, well, okay. very good. I'm glad you guys could join us tonight. Yeah. Thank you. Keep thank up with the work. Don't hesitate to reach out by email or, or wherever you know how to get a hold of me. If you've got any questions Yep. Sounds and good. thanks to Brad and team 461 for mm. having me here tonight. I'm in their shop <laughs> tonight. So I'm going to go check out their robot. <laughs> Sounds good. No pictures, though. No pictures. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks. See you guys later. Thanks. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye.